So if you want to extract every mile you can from each tank of fuel you have, this is definitely the video for you. We're going to focus on hypermiling driving techniques. That's things you can do as a driver to improve the fuel consumption and fuel economy of your car. At the end, we're going to look at some mods and things you can do mechanically and physically to the car that will also help improve your fuel economy. And there's a bonus at the end, something that will help every single driver dramatically cut the amount of fuel they use. So what's the most economical way to drive a car? How can you save money? How can you extract extra miles from every drop of petrol or gasoline or diesel that you put into your tank? Your driving style is the most significant change that you can make to the fuel consumption of your engine. So before you even start thinking about modifying the engine, retuning it and doing other mechanical things to the car, it's the nut behind the wheel that makes the biggest difference to how much gas mileage you will get out of your car. So bear in mind that your throttle, the accelerator pedal, that's the one on the right, is, is the biggest determining factor in how much fuel you are using. So the further down it goes, and I must point out that it's not binary, it's not on or off, there is a big degree of motion between it being fully on and fully off. The further down it goes, the more fuel your engine will try to use. So the key is to use light throttle inputs. So if you were cruising cruising on a motorway and you had a, a slight downhill incline. Interestingly, it doesn't matter what gear you're in. If you're not pressing the throttle at all and the hill is sufficient to keep the momentum of the car going, your engine will be dumping no fuel into the engine. If you move into neutral, however, and allow the engine to coast, it will now need to dump fuel into the engine to just keep the engine ticking over. So a lot of people think that coasting with the engine and clutch disengaged is going to save them fuel when actually just easing off the throttle is all you need to do and the modern car's ECU and fuel system will adjust. You'll notice your trick computer reading zero fuel used during that time when you're off throttle. Please drop us a like, it really helps us to get out there and let me know in the comments what car you've got, what changes you've made to your driving style and whether eco driving and hypermiling is something that you've started doing and what your experience has been and certainly some of the tips that we've mentioned, we love hearing the feedback from people. You you may well disagree with some of the advice so please drop us a message in the comments let us know why you disagree and what your personal experience has been because it helps us all to have a more rounded out opinion on the subject of hypermiling and improving our gas mileage so it's a big debate really as to how heavy you should be with your throttle and how high you should go in the rpm range so i've got a slightly unusual car because it's got cylinder on demand which basically means that at certain rpm levels if there's no load two cylinders will cut out completely and I'll just be driving on two cylinders but that will only work at around 1500 rpms or more so get get a feel for your car and where the point is in the rpm range that is most economical to you so for most situations of driving if you're not gaining speed your engine is not under load you're under very light throttle inputs moving to the highest gear that's possible for the speed that you're traveling at is the most economical way of driving I would stress that you should avoid laboring the engine so if you're in say fifth gear or sixth gear and you've just been cruising along at a constant speed and now you need to accelerate it would be a big mistake to try and do that in the high gear you really do need to change down into an appropriate gear for the engine speed and the demands that you're putting on it and actually most engines have got an effective power output at the fairly low rpms it's generally that first third of the rpm range where you get a really good range of power and economy so if you want to drive the most economically everywhere you would typically drive at just 30 miles an hour and you would build your speed up very very slowly that would drive me nuts and the line of people I've got driving behind me would be driven absolutely stark raving bonkers I, I shudder to think what road rage incidents that I will be racking up for myself if I did that so we've got to taper what is going to give us the best lab MPG conditions 
with what works well in the real world. So generally you would accelerate reasonably quickly up to the speed and then drop into a high gear and just cruise at that speed. So by accelerating, we're recommending that you just use a light throttle. You don't need more than a third of the throttle. And if you're in the right gear for the engine load, it, the engine's gonna be working efficiently. So it makes sense to build your speed up relatively quickly, not overdoing it. If you're doing full throttle accelerations, you're actually wasting a bit of fuel. The engine will typically start to run rich and you'll be down on your fuel economy at the end of the day. So it's those slow throttle inputs. Now, the next most important thing to do is to anticipate the road ahead. Using your brakes will waste fuel economy. I had a comment recently of someone saying, well, what's the point of not using your brakes? They're on the car, and if you're driving in traffic, you've got to use them. Well, if you're really good at anticipating the traffic ahead, you can drive with hardly any brake use whatsoever. I had a dodgy clutch on a car and I drove about 400 miles without being able to use the clutch at all. So I was anticipating the road ahead, slowing up. I hardly used my brakes, but the most important thing for me there was not to use the clutch. So if you keep an eye out, not just on the car in front, look way ahead to the cars in front of the cars that are in front of you and work out what they're doing. If you leave sufficient buffer between you and the car in front it'll give you a little bit of slack space to roll into should they come to a crashing halt and if you can actually keep yourself moving and the cars behind you moving you're actually eliminating a lot of causes of jams and bottlenecks on our roads a lot of the traffic jams actually only occur because people come to a complete stop and the first car stops for a millisecond the next car stops for a fraction of a second by three or four miles down the line people are having to stop for five or ten minutes just because of the amplification effect that you get when you're moving in traffic. I'm getting into the realms of being a real traffic nerd there so I'm going to try and avoid that and just concentrate on the subject of economical driving. So slowing up before you hit a corner just by easing off the throttle it'll save you from having to use the brake and if you do it right and you've got the balance of the car right maybe even trailing throttle as you go around the corner or the bend you can keep your speed and momentum up so you won't have to accelerate again after that bend or that corner if you can safely carry that speed through the corner it's really economical if you can do so so does using cruise control improve your fuel economy well a lot depends on your driving habits if you are a really good driver and can stay focused and concentrate and adjust the throttle and the car's speed depending on the prevailing conditions then you can do a better job than a completely automated cruise control so with cruise control it will maintain the set speed regardless really of the conditions of the road and what's going on and if you've got a manual car it won't be changing gear either so as a driver the critical thing is to make sure that you are in an appropriate gear as we said earlier and just relying on your cruise control to maintain a constant speed is not the most optimum setup if you want to extract the maximum economy from your drive so what about slipstreaming so slipstreaming is where you follow the car in front and the idea is that they cut through the air and leave leave you a little bit of a vacuum to go in. So you see this in motorsports, a great maneuver is to go up behind someone quite close in their slipstream. So they're fighting with wind resistance and you're not, you are in their slipstream. You're not subject to those forces that are acting on them. So you can build up more speed using less power and shoot round them. So in reality, slipstreaming would add a little bit of fuel economy, but it's pretty dangerous to do. To do it effectively and get any benefit, you need to be so close to the car or the vehicle in front that you are within the stopping distance and in some cases even within your thinking distance and that's really not a good thing to be doing when you're driving a car so when you're going uphill do you maintain the same speed or do you let the speed trail off well the, the critical thing is to usually drop down a gear or two and just make sure that you were in the most efficient part of the power band and you need to try and concentrate on using a light throttle that trailing throttle is what makes all the difference to your fuel economy. So if you were paranoid about getting as much gas mileage from your car as possible, you would allow the car to slow up very slightly on a hill. You wouldn't be wasting excess energy to maintain its speed. But I know a lot of other people would argue that it requires less effort to keep the car moving at a constant velocity and uh, they would insist on maintaining that speed and increasing the throttle um, and just keeping the car moving. Um, but so much depends on your car, your engine, 
And the critical thing here is to do some tests. Don't ever assume anything. Don't assume that the highest gear and the lowest RPM point is always the best place to be, especially if you're trying to accelerate slightly or you're building up speed. And building up speed very slowly, we said earlier that that generally takes a lot longer than it's practical for the saving that you get. So there is a compromise there. So again, look at some benchmarks. Look at how heavy you need to be on the throttle to make reasonable progress in the traffic without annoying everyone, but also to ensure that you're getting the maximum amount of fuel economy for your driving. If you're breaking records, you've got a completely different approach to economical driving. And you are going to be one of the people that I am stuck behind on a Sunday morning drive, just itching for an opportunity to overtake you. So those short journeys really are the killer when it comes to fuel economy. And combining those trips into one day, if you can, makes a big difference to the overall economy. In fact, with things that I've done sort of over the last few months, I've kept a very careful log. The fuel economy improvement is around about 50 to 70% better fuel economy when I've combined all of my short trips. So going to the library, going to the chemist to pick some things up for people, um, going to the corner shop, that sort of thing. If I can do all of that in one day, my fuel economy is much greater if the engine is warm between those journeys and I'm using the car more. So don't forget, we've got that bonus tip coming up at the end that could save you over 80% of your current fuel usage very, very simply. So one other consideration that you have when looking to extract miles from every tank of fuel is actually the route that you take through the town. Now, I do quite a few little logs as I go and I've worked out some interesting patterns. It might seem to be the case that the shortest route is also the most economical route that you can take, but actually it varies a great deal depending on your time of day. For example, if I'm on the journey across my local town, if I set out in the morning when traffic is quite hard and I take the shortest route, which is traditionally through lots of little junctions and corners, it takes takes longer because I'm waiting for traffic, but there is a lot more stop start and that really does ruin my fuel economy. So at those times of the day, actually taking a longer route just by going on the main roads, so there's only a couple of junctions along the way, I can generally extract a lot more MPG from my engine. But then in the evening, when things are really, really quiet, it then becomes cheaper for me and more economical to take the shortest route because there's very little other traffic on the road. I'm not stopping and starting so much. So think carefully about the route that you take, plan your route in advance, try to avoid traffic and anything that might cause you to stop and start along the way. And you will really reap dividends when it comes to fuel economy and fuel consumption. So I promised a few mods and mod ideas in this video so that things you can do to your car to just improve fuel economy. And while I was researching it, it's a massive topic. So there's a separate video coming dedicated to mods and upgrades to your car that can help you to improve improve your fuel economy. But a few little tips, just quick pointers and a heads up for this video that's coming up. Fitting eco tyres with a lower rolling resistance can make quite a difference to your overall fuel economy. Removing weight from the car, so looking for ways of saving weight will also dramatically reduce your car's fuel consumption. And there's a few little mods that you can actually do to the engine to just make it more efficient. And a more efficient engine is burning the fuel more effectively, allowing you to extract more energy from every drop of fuel fuel that goes through it. So things like remapping, your choice of fuel, the octane level, how the engine is set up for that can all have a bearing on the fuel economy that you get. We've got that bonus tip coming up at the end that could save you over 80% of your current fuel usage very, very simply. Just making sure that those tyre pressures are set to the correct levels can pay dividends in the long run. If your tyres are underinflated, they're flexing a lot more. The car's got a lot more effort to get the car rolling. And I'd be curious to know what your car most economical speed is, the practical speed that you like to travel at. A lot of people have got in their heads that 50 miles an hour is the benchmark for best economy and best progress, um, but your experiences may well be very, very different. So please let me know in the comments what you tend to cruise at. If you're not in a particular hurry and you're just trying to maximize your mileage that you get from a tank of fuel, what sort of speed do you typically drive at? And what sort of miles per gallon return do you see on that usually? So that's a 
address the primary things you can do as a driver to cut down your fuel consumption. If you've got some tips to pass on, please fire up the comments. Let us know how you're doing with regard to fuel economy in your car. Maybe what you used to get and what you get now based on more economical driving styles. Um, and hopefully that will inspire others to actually think about the fuel consumption. So it's not only going to save us all money, it's going to help the environment and it's going to help keep those fuel prices down because we'll all be using significantly less fuel. So now that little tip that you've been waiting for that could save you over 80% of your fuel costs, you obviously need to get your family on board for this. But all you have to do is get your family to push your car. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has been useful to you and it's going to save you money in the long run. Stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. We've got other videos coming up to help people to save money on their driving in the long term and just keep the car in good condition and save on running costs of cars. And we'd hate you to miss out. So if you subscribe and you hit that bell notification, you'll be notified every time we've got new content going out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, stay tuned.